I want to take you to a rock concert right now, okay? I want you to imagine that you're in a big, a big open stadium, it's a big sports stadium, okay? And the band, the band stage is down there. You're maybe like halfway back, maybe halfway up in the stands, okay? It's you and 25,000 people, and you're all doing the exact same thing. You're all just screaming <laughs> your heads off because you can't believe it's gonna happen. This is the greatest day in your entire life. They're gonna be out there, you're gonna see, and all of a sudden, there they are, they're walking out, can you see them? Just like, they're so far away, they're like four dots, but it's absolutely them, you can't mistake it. And they're getting up to the stage, and they're picking up their instruments, and they're gonna play the songs, and now they're playing the songs, but you can't tell what they are because you're all just screaming, and you're thinking, you know, if everybody would just shut up. We can hear the music. That's what you're thinking. What you're doing is screaming your head off. You can't believe that you're actually there and they're actually playing. It's really good. And then all of a sudden, almost before it begins, it's over. It's over. It's been what? It's been 33 minutes. Only 33 minutes. And they're putting their Swiss down. They're leaving the stage. They're saying goodbye. And that's it. And you're still screaming. And what neither you nor any of the other 25,000 people there realize is that you are the last people on earth who will ever have that experience. Because the date is August 29th, 1966. The place is Candlestick Park, San Francisco, California. And you have just seen the last concert the Beatles would ever play. And when you're talking about success, sometimes it's helpful to look at those who've already achieved the kind of success that we'd all like to achieve. And you know what? Whether you like them or not, when it comes to success, the Beatles are the gold standard. Bill Staten is a 29 Emmy Award winning TV producer, writer, and performer, the author of nine business training programs in use worldwide, and an internationally recognized Beatle expert who literally wrote the book on the Beatles' success. He blends the business smarts he learned from 20 years of corporate management with the showbiz sparks he gleaned from working with people like Seinfeld, Jay Leno, and Ellen DeGeneres to create entertaining and enlightening presentations enjoyed by audiences around the world. Bill is the one speaker who truly does combine business smarts with showbiz sparks and a touch of the Beatles for a keynote that will make you the star of your event. They were together fewer than 10 years. 10 years! I mean, come on, that's nothing. That's a, be honest with me here. How many of you have underwear older than that? <laughs> Imagine it. Your records are consistently hitting the top of the charts. You're playing to sold out stadiums all around the world. Everybody, everybody from, from corporate bigwigs to heads of state to royalty wants to hang out with you. People are screaming at you everywhere you go. I know, you're insurance professionals. You're used to having people screaming at you. You're performing at your peak, and no one can touch you. Creatively, artistically, financially, no one can touch you. I'm getting quivery just thinking about it. It's amazing, you're the best of the best, and not incidentally, along the way, you're also creating a legacy of work that not only is gonna far outlive you, but this raising the bar of what's possible in your industry to unimagined heights. You're doing this over and over and over again because you're not just a musician. You're not just a rock star. You are a Beatle. So why are we talking about the Beatles today? I mean, really, why do we even care? Especially since there are some people who don't even like the Beatles. <laughs> I know, I know, but they're out there. They're out there. I have friends who don't like, the, not friends, People, people, I know people who don't like the Beatles. There's one guy, Chris, who keeps saying to me, Bill, the Beatles are no longer relevant. This is from a guy, this is from a guy who owns not one, not two, but three albums by the Partridge family. <laughs> Did you even know they had three albums? Mostly I think it comes down to five decisions that they made, five ideas, simple individually, but you put them together and really use them and they can change everything and take you to the top of the charts. And so that's what I want to talk with you about for the next few minutes. 
specifically the five best decisions the Beatles ever made and why you should make them too. John Lennon got it. What he got was this. When you spread the spotlight, everything gets brighter. When you build a great team and make it about the team instead of just you, when you make it about the team, bring in a great team and share the credit, you're gonna get great results. How did the Beatles rise to the top? Well, they had something special. What they had was a single shared vision. And it was this. They were going to be bigger than Elvis. When you play to your strengths, you make better music. When you play to your strengths, you get better results. So what is it that you can do better than anyone else? See, the Beatles knew one thing. They knew that if you really want to make an impact, if you, if you want to create a legacy so strong that 40 years after you're done, people are still holding you up as the gold standard in your industry, you have to shake it up. This album shook everything up. It, I'm sorry. For you kids in the audience, this is called a record album. <laughs> big, isn't it? Think of it. Think of it as a big, scratchy CD that you know what we had to do? We had to manually turn it over halfway through. In the snow, uphill, both ways. On the back of a shovel by candlelight. Life was tough in the 60s, you have no idea. This, this album shook everything up musically, lyrically, visually, shook everything up and yep, it went straight to number one without the Beatles touring. Carry that weight. It means, it means going the extra mile to get the extra result. It means doing what it takes. It means doing the heavy lifting because let's be honest here. You can, you can spread the spotlight and, and you can have a single shared vision and you can play to your strengths and you can even shake it up. But until somebody rolls up their sleeves and actually does the work, nothing's gonna happen. So is it A, is it Kelly? Is it B, Paris Hilton? C, Shirley Temple, or D, Sarah Palin? Wait, who's on there three times, do you think? Uh, I think I'm going to try C. C, Shirley Temple? No, in fact, it's Kelly Hopper Moore. A lot of people don't realize the long history. No, I'm kidding. It is, in fact, Shirley Temple, of course. Congratulations. Yes. Paul McCartney once said, the reason we were twice as good as anyone else is because we worked twice as hard anyone else. See, the Beatles got it. They got what you folks get and what you just saw here demonstrated. That ultimately, your results are going to equal your effort. If you want to be twice as good, you have to work twice as hard. In the end, your results will equal your effort. If you want to get more, you have to give more. If you want to get more in your careers, in your communities, in your relationships. If you want to get more, you have to give more. And the giving comes first. Because it turns out the Beatles are right. In the end, the love you take really is equal to the love you make. Thank you so much for your attention. How about a big hand for the Almost Fab Four? Thank you to all of you, all of you. Have a great summer.